You know, people look the same on the outside, but God knows those that are his and those that are not, right? They look the same. So what makes a seed bad? What makes a seed good? It's what's planted on the inside of you. In Romans 5, 12 to 15, I'm not going to read that, but basically Paul says this, you know, we are evil today. You know, we have a sin problem, right? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God because of Adam's sin. Adam sinned and he begat sin. He gave birth to somebody who had the same sin nature and so forth. We're all, we all are derived from Adam and Eve. Do you believe that? You know that even science proves that we all come from the same couple? Do you know that? The same parents? Even science has determined that. And he sinned and his sin caused a curse to come upon the planet. And all down the line, until this day, right now, people have been born with this sinful nature. This sinful nature. So that's where the bad seed comes from. In that particular uh, passage of scripture in Romans 5, it says, just as one man's sin influenced the whole world and, 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 and every society, so one man's righteousness influences us today. We become a good seed because of Christ's righteous life. And now, because we're born again, we have this seed. Listen, we have this seed living inside of us. That makes us a good seed. That makes us wheat, folks. The word in the Greek uh, for seed, if, if you look at uh, 1 John 3, 9, I, I'm not going to read all these scriptures because I see you, you guys are nodding off on me, but, but let me just say this. We're going to turn to 1 John 3, 9, and I'll talk to those of you that are awake, okay? Okay. 3, 9. Uh, would you please turn there? 1 John, toward the back of the book, 3, 9. He says this. Let me know if, if you're there. Yeah. I got one person, Judd. Okay. Yeah. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. You see, the seed of God is in me. When I accepted Jesus, I, it's like a seed was planted in me. That's why there's a part of me that wants to do good, that wants to live a righteous life because his seed is in me. The Greek word translated seed, write this down, this will wake you up, is sperma. Sperma. Yes, that's where we get the, the word sperm, the man's seed. God's sperma, God's seed is in you. And when you opened your life to that, you know, when he knocked on the door of your heart and you said, Jesus, come in. He came in and planted a seed and something was conceived in you and birthed in you. You're born again. That's why when Jesus comes back, you're going up. Tell somebody next to you, I'm going up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to go, I'm going to uh, go over another point. And I'm not going to rush this today. If I have to uh, continue this uh, next week, I will. But, but let, me, let me just say this. Do you have a hard time accepting that there is a literal hell? How many folks do, honestly? You know, when you think about, my goodness, being punished forever and ever and ever and ever. Matthew 25, 41 says that hell was meant for the devil and his angels, not for people. Hell was meant for the devil and his angels, not people. Does God want to send somebody to hell? Of course not. 2 Peter 3 9 says that it's not God's will that any should perish, bless you, but that all should come to repentance. That's 2 Peter, it's in your notes, 3 9. It does? Yeah. Oh, so somebody was paying attention? Let me look at that. It is 2 Peter. 
the person who did your notes were, were mistaken. I did my own notes. I, I, uh, I had it right. <laughs> okay, three nine. It says uh, the Lord is not s slow in keeping His promises. Some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Second Peter three nine. You got that? Second Peter three nine. Who does he? Who does God want saved? <coughs> everyone. He wants everyone to be a Christian. Is everyone a Christian? Is everyone saved? Is everyone wheat? No. Is that God's will? No. He wants everybody to come. Because the because hell was meant for the devil and his angels. And you know, folks, if we believe that there is a place called heaven where the righteous will be rewarded for eternity, there has to be a place called hell. Because God is not only loving, he's also just. He's all loving, but he's also all just. And he cannot wink at sin. Let me give you one scripture to ponder until next week. Romans 11.22. It tells us to consider, therefore, the kindness and sternness of God. Amen. Romans 11.22. Let us consider, therefore, the kindness and sternness sternness of God. It says sternness to, to those who fell, but kindness to you. Tell the person next to you, kindness to you. Kindness. Provided you continue in his kindness, therefore you also will be cut off. Are you going to be cut off? I'm not going to be cut off. I'm not going to be cut off. Jesus keeps me in the vine. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me say in conclusion, and we're gonna we're gonna finish this next week. Are you coming next week? Yes. You gonna bring somebody with you? No. no? Okay. Well, <laughs> he'll try. That's all you can do. That's all I do. It is our privilege to be part of this kingdom, folks. To be wheat instead of tares. It is our privilege. Not everyone has answered the invitation to live in this glorious kingdom. As we wait for the redemption of our bodies and the redemption of this fallen world, let us live as kingdom people. Let us continue to grow as wheat in the midst of weeds. God knows who we are and the enemy cannot pluck us out. When Jesus comes with his powerful angels, we, his people, are going with him and will be with him forever. Therefore, I say to you, look up. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.